friends in our previous session we have discussed about the surface land forms the features produced and engineering activities most of the cases we go for shallow foundation like for g plus 1 g plus 2 g plus 3 houses etc but engineering is not only this we have to construct a dam tunnels or some deep foundations are required for say g plus 10 g plus these are now it is common in such cases surface observation is not adequate generally soil layer extends up to few meter depth and our all houses mostly uh, is lying um, is constructed on the foundation of this 2 meter 3 meter depth and on the soil but for dam like that investigation surface investigation is not adequate and there are certain geological features which are not even observed often on the ground and for a deep foundation to understand even below 4 meter 5 meter even up to 100 meter 1000 meter depends on nature of the project come on friends we shall try to understand how exactly we go ahead with for deep foundations we know that on the surface there is a vegetation soil cover and often very often rocks are seen when rocks are seen on the earth we call outcrop rock is exposed to atmosphere we call it outcrop for any deep foundation outcrop is the basic unit from which our all investigation has to start therefore once we have the exposed rock on the ground say this is the ground we have a soil cover vegetation and this rock is in a hilly area it is found we call this as a outcrop when we have the outcrop generally we look into we break the rock what it is where it is what it is often that is not enough sometimes the rocks do show some kind of inclination they are oriented this way or they are like this in such cases with a simple instrument called brunton compass we try to understand orientation of the rock the rock inclination like this and they constitute the dip and strike of the rock so dip and strike is a fundamental property of the exposed rocks for us for further detailed investigation i have said dip and strike say s s means strike what exactly we mean d means dip what is that c in this we will elaborate more quickly dip this is the inclination of the layer the same thing which i have shown these are inclined layer these are the inclined layer these are the inclined layer if this is the horizontal surface the angle formed by this inclined layer with the horizontal surface is called angle of inclination we call angle of dip so this is angle of dip in simple what is that it is inclination of the rock bed rock layer with respect to horizontal that is a dip what is the strike when rocks are inclined they intersect with the ground and the direction of that intersection line due to intersection a line like feature is formed geographical direction of that line is called strike for example here this is the strike what do you what do you mean by strike it is not just just a direction this is along which that rocks are present that rocks are present 
rocks oriented rock train that is so this if this is the horizontal this angle is inclination this is the strike direction the same thing it is the geographical direction of that line formed by intersection of inclined plane with the horizontal surface that is strike geographical direction of a strike is the strike direction geographical direction of that line is called strike and angle of inclination of the inclined bed with respect to horizontal is called dip and this is measured with the help of a clinometer compass or better brunton compass the geographical direction of that line we call so the boy is measuring the inclination of that with the help of a brunton compass in all respect it is similar to the clinometer compass or magnetic compass but slightly different we have in this compass two bubbles one is the bullseye bubble that is to orient the compass whether it is perfectly horizontal like that and when that bubble is exactly at the center the compass is held perfectly horizontal then edge of the compass i orient it to parallel to the structure for example this is the structure for parallel to this or in this direction parallel to this i orient the edge of the compass then there is a magnetic needle that shows some direction what is that angle with respect to north or with respect to south i can say say north 30 degree east means that a line is oriented in this way if this is the north north 30 degree east like this this angle that is the direction of a strike line so and the angle there is one more bubble that is we call a tube bubble i want to measure the angle of this inclined plane and i keep edge of the compass oriented to that and then i have to see the bubble is exactly at the center tube bubble there is a, a device behind that compass i can orient when my compass edge is perfectly parallel to the inclined plane there is one arm which swings around that is that shows an angle that is the angle of inclination it means with the help of a brunton compass it is possible to measure the angle of the dip and the strike friends often what happens especially we are underground if we do not have this line is visible so this line is not visible if there is a soil cover etc especially in previous case for example this line intersection line is not visible in such cases i measure some angle i am not sure whether it is perpendicular to the direction of strike or in any other direction when i measure the inclination of the bedding plane bed or a layer or a plane with respect to horizontal in a direction perpendicular to the strike it is called true dip what do you mean by true dip it is an angle measure for the bedding plane in the direction perpendicular to the strike that is a true dip if i measure them in any other direction or in the absence of knowledge of the strike it is apparent this happens especially in a tunnel section on the ground nothing is visible or underground mines etc or where rocks not fully exposed on a hill cliff road side we do find the inclined beds in such cases it happens therefore all that angle we call apparent dip so we have true dip measure perpendicular to the 
perpendicular to the direction of a strike line and apparent if measured in any other direction with respect to a strike line. Strike is the geographical direction of the line formed by intersection of inclined plane with the horizontal. Yes, this is the basic information which we need to collect and generally we mark it on the map when we are preparing a map. In the map such that the longer direction is always parallel to the direction and if I show this means this is angle of the bedding plane, I write 30 degree or 40 degree that indicates this inclination 30 degree, 40 degree. This if I mark bedding planes are sloping that way, bedding planes here sloping this way, I write that this is a universally accepted symbol for showing a bed, beds dip and strike. Carefully remember, this may be the north direction, beds are oriented like this, then this become the dip and this is the I mark on the paper like this. For a new, for the map, this is north line and rocks are slope uh, oriented this way, that is strike, this is a dip and angle I write. Thus, we present this, show that in that way and the same thing which I have explained, I have shown here. Now, I have just mentioned a true dip and apparent dip. How do we know that it is a true dip or apparent dip? Example, you pour water. How do they flow? In the direction of slope. If there are two, three slope direction, which direction they run faster or preferably they flow? It is the direction along which steeper gradient. It means a true dip is the maximum angle of inclination. And we may find it is sloping in other direction, may be there, but it is not the true dip. Therefore, if I pour water on the sloping surface, if they flow like this, that is a true dip. They may flow like this, they may flow like this, but very rapidly first they flow, that is the direction of a true dip. Yes, dip is means slope or inclination, but if when I call it a slope or inclination, people may mean it is a ground, ground topography. But for a rock, it should be specific because ground can have this like this. But if the rock layers are, it is a plane surface, whether I measure angle here, angle here, angle here, remain the same. For ground, it is not the case. If I measure here, 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 angles are different. Therefore, inclination or slope, when I say, it should refer to the ground. When I say dip, it should refer to the rocks. Therefore, and whether I measure here, 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 along a plane, irrespective, it, it is the same. And therefore, we use a specific term dip. In other words, it is also an inclination. So, dip is angle of inclination of a bedding plane with respect to horizontal. It is expressed both in direction and amount. Dip has both direction as well as amount. Yes, the dip direction is the direction along which inclination of the bedding plane occurs measured in direction perpendicular to the strike line. There are true dip and apparent dip, just now I have mentioned true dip in any other direction if I measure that is apparent dip. True dip measured in a direction perpendicular to the strike, apparent dip measured in any other direction. There is a definite relationship between a true dip and apparent dip Several apparent dips I have, I can find the true dip. If I have true dip, I can find the direction of strike line 
there are some exercises we shall try now. Okay. Before going that, no. Imagine a situation. We have this is this is a layer. This is a layer of rock. These are a layer of rock. Correct. Now say some solution from a depth came across this and passed, and that solution has interacted with this rock. if that rock has interacted with that solution and if the solution brought some important mineral with it in solution form say gold copper lead zinc these are all zinc etc generally come from or along with the hydrothermal solution what is hydrothermal solution high temperature solution at the deeper part when i was a high temperature solution form they dissolve some metals along with it and when that hydrothermal solution is squeezed out they migrate and whenever they come in contact with a favorable rock they can interact with them and they can deposit the mineral deposit these are gold say copper i am interested in mining that so what i have to do from the ground i have to put a drill i have to put a bore hole where i have to put a bore hole can i put a bore hole here 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 where i have to put if i put i miss this layer therefore the very knowledge of deep and strike helps me to where i have to put my drill hole either to find the mineral deposit or to find the water whatever the first and foremost application is engineering starts with a deep and strike i gave one simple example where i have to put my drill depends on the deep and strike and what what i want to reach here i want to reach that deposit yes now you say this is the deep angle This is the intersection of the line. These are the intersection of the inclined plane with the horizontal surface. These are the strike direction perpendicular to that direction. I am measuring this angle. That is the dip. I have got the dip and the strike, friends. it is not that simple often if i have a strike i have the inclined plane both are there it is a simple case simplest case i can go ahead with it often what happens you see for example this is the inclined plane if the surface is not seen maybe soil cover vegetation etc how do i know what is the strike the same bed may orient like this this could be the strike the same bed may like this this could be the strike this could be the strike therefore for a given inclined plane this can be strike this can be strike this can be strike i do not know therefore just if i observe dip alone it is not adequate not enough similarly if this is the strike direction the bed can dip this way the bed can dip this way the bed can dip this way similarly if i have only strike i observe on the ground it is once again inadequate it is incomplete information because if this is the strike beds can have any direction perpendicular to this or perpendicular to this whether this or this therefore it is not enough if i have only dip or only strike both i have to have many often this kind of opportunity to measure dip and strike is not possible the ground condition do not permit under such condition what we do because for the same dip amount the strike can be different here 
the same dip, a strike like this, like, 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 like this, different exactly here, it can be different. Therefore, both dip direction, dip amount and strike direction give the complete information. However, with the partial information data, it is possible to reconstruct, get the better complete information. How it is? So, how it is? How to swim? If I say that is not enough, you have to jump to water and start swimming. Then we learn exactly the similar. Now, I start with an example. A limestone bed shows a true dip of 1 is to 5 along north 40 degree east. What is? A limestone bed has a true dip of a north 40 degree east. It is proposed to quarry for the same quarry. Limestone means we wish to quarry for some industry like. And for the same, it is proposed to construct a road. From the quarry, I have to bring the limestone to the desired location where we can dump or store. I need to have a road. The desired gradient of the road is, is 1 is to 7. In what direction the road can be proposed? This is the simplest engineering problem we come across how deep and strike will help. That we want to appreciate and based on one information, how we will go ahead with it. In the problem, we are not given strike direction, only true dip is given. Okay, then how we will go ahead, we will try. Now, friends, in this, if this is the north and south, from north direction, move this way, move this way, move this way, move this way, that defines the direction, we know it. Perfect? Yes. From center O, if I move away from the center, away from the center, away from the center, like this, like this, like this, they define the gradient. Thus, it is a simple geometric figure. I give the concept of dip and strike, that is a direction and amount. I give it to, then use this geometry to reconstruct my problem to address some engineering issues like a road. Problem clear. Now, how I do? Here, I know what do you mean by strike. Here we have seen a strike means it is nothing but the layers of the rocks. Layers of the rocks. These are the strike means these are the layers of the rock in which they are present oriented. Therefore, I have to find the direction along which that rock is present. Then I have to construct the road to the rock bed then it is possible to start querying. I have to first locate where that rock is present, then the road comes. How to? Now, simple, draw north, east, west line, north, south line. The given data is north 40 degree east. I repeat, keep the compass here, this is north, Ten, twenty, thirty, forty degree north, forty degree east. I have drawn then north forty degree east along the. This is from north forty degree east. Correct? Yes. Fine. Next, I have to show one is to five. I select a suitable scale. 1 centimeter as a 1 centimeter. What do I mean by 1 is to 5? 1 meter, 5 meter. 1 kilometer, 5 kilometer. 1 centimeter, 5 centimeter. 1 inch, 5 inch. That's all. That's a gradient. That's a ratio line. Yes, 1 is to 5. If I have selected a scale of 1 centimeter as 1 unit, then I have to represent 5. 1 is to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have marked it. 
I know that it is a true if they have already given. Once I know this, perpendicular to the direction of true dip, there is a strike. Perpendicular to the direction of strike, there is a true dip. Therefore, if I know the true dip at this point, if I draw perpendicular to the true dip at this point, this becomes the direction of strike line. Once I have the direction of strike line, it nothing. It is nothing but the, this is the direction along which that rock is present. Limestone bed is oriented this way. Now I have to select the direction of the road and the required gradient or slope is one is to seven. How do we define? Depends on the amount of load I have to lift. Very steep gradient, heavy load cannot climb up. A gentle load is required. Like that, it depends on the density of the material. Like that. Therefore, now I have to have a road of 1 is to 7 gradient. What I do? I select from a scale. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, 1 is to 7 as the arc compass, I take O as the center, 7 centimeter at the arc, I cut the strike line somewhere here. It intersects the strike line at two points. Now, if I join from O to that point and to that point, that represents the direction of the road. Now, I have to find the direction. Again, keep the compass here, find from here this angle. That is, in my case, it is north 9 degree west or from north so much degree, north 85 degree east. This is the answer, desired answer. Now, but when we, it is for the examination point may be fine, but that is not adequate. Now, also I should find the direction of a strike line. What could be the direction of a strike line? When I know it is north 40 degree east, if I draw this, this, this become the triangle, if this is a 90 degree, this 40 degree, the direction of this line is 50 degree. That is nothing but the, the direction of that line either with respect to north or with respect to the north 50 degree or south 50 degree, one and the same. What is the direction of strike line here? North 50 degree west or south 50 degree east, whatever the direction, that gives the direction of the line. The problem is complete. Okay. Now, hope you appreciate how so simple yet so important all that we have done just based on the true dip amount, true dip direction. Friends, just now we have mentioned in many cases there are true dip is also not possible. Then how to be? Yes. One more problem we shall try. That is, if I have one or two or more apparent dips, I based on those apparent dips, I try to reconstruct the direction of strike line and then perpendicular to the direction of strike line, I get the true dip. This is another simple problem. A sheared iron stone bed, iron formation you call it contain a gold deposit. Now, it is a proposed to mine underground mining gold, kilo, coal or two kilometer depth like that. We excavate a deep well like. From there, we send men and material in equipment, etc. They excavate a dig around, come and lift it up. A shaft is nothing but a, a vertical cut as good as well, but 
well when i when i draw a well it is a well to lift water ground is horizontal but if the ground may be inclined i if i dig like this if rocks are like this is it a shortcut on the other hand if i drill like this this is a shortest route to reach the layer of rock correct therefore this is a shaft what is shaft shaft is also perpendicular well is perpendicular to the ground shaft is perpendicular to the rock bed so it is proposed to have underground mining therefore we have to have a shaft in what direction the shaft can be proposed if the iron stone shows apparent dip of 1 is to 5 along south 30 degree east and 1 is to 5 on 5 along north 60 degree east we have two apparent dips nothing else also find out the gradient of the shaft we have to find also find the direction of the strike of the bed direction of the strike of the bed we have to find simple what is now here you see i have done north east line simple then i have kept the protect kept the protector like this yes oh. kept the protector like this simple from protector north how much this is 5.5 is not 60 degree east 10 20 30 40 50 60 north 60 degree east i have marked and it is 1 is to 5.5 1 cm as 1 unit 5.5 unit i have to show 1 2 3 4 5 5.5 i have shown similarly i have 1 is to 4 along south 30 degree east keep the protector here so this is 10 20 30 so to 30 degree east i have drawn and that is 1 is to 4 as per this to show 4 unit i require 4 cm 1 cm 2 cm 3 cm 4 cm so 4 cm here 5.5 cm here in that desired direction that is a given direction i have marked the passing through these two points if i draw a line that become the strike line that is nothing but the direction along which that quartz vein is present so iron stone is present and that is containing the gold first i have to locate where are those rocks first for me that is important that is containing gold i have to excavate it so i found where how is the rock where are the rock my next job is how to get the shaft shaft is nothing but the perpendicular distance perpendicular is the shortest distance shortest distance is perpendicular okay perpendicular or shortest distance i have to find we know perpendicular to the strike there is a true dip therefore true dip is nothing but the shaft itself therefore i have to find the true dip how to find if this is the strike direction perpendicular to this point from this point i have to drop this perpendicular there are several ways you can construct that i do not tell here this is the direction of the strike from this point we have to drop perpendicular to this and then this is perpendicular this become the direction of true dip what is that the direction of true dip is south from south it is 50 degree south 50 degree east this is a measure if i with the help of a compass sorry this one i can measure this okay you measure the uh, direction and that become the direction of a true dip and 
if you draw join from here to here this distance that distance from here to here that defines the true dip that is 1 to 3 3.5 1 is to 3.5 thus that is the direction and gradient of the shaft nothing but the true dip okay now here you have seen two apparent dips from that you have reconstructed the strike line and got the true dip in the previous case they gave the true dip and you have to find the desired direction of the road as good as the apparent dip yes friends till now we have tried the geometry but not always geometry has certain limitation very very precise it should be pencil thickness itself is 1 mm and in many important project that 1 mm may represent 10 meter like that so errors are possible therefore we prefer to use some trigonometric relationship as well combination also we can use now we start with a simple problem Yes, well, suppose if this is the ground, this is the ground. If this is the layer of a rock, this is the layer of rock. If this is the theta, and this also theta because bedding planes are horizontal. This is the perpendicular thickness. Whether I take here, 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 one and the same. Now, if I consider this as a triangle, if ground is horizontal. if i say this is a w this is true thickness i know t by w is a sin theta or t is equal to w sin theta correct simple so this t true thickness width of the outcrop and angle of inclination then this defines me this relationship t is equal to w sin theta now suppose i have taken a drill like this and that drill intersect the upper surface of that rock and the lower surface of the same rock here and if i observe my drill it appears that that is the thickness if the beds were horizontal it is a true upper surface the lower surface upper and lower this define the t it is perpendicular to the bed and therefore that is a true thickness but in this case this is not the true thickness so whenever we take a drill holes it may or may not be true thickness because we do not know whether the beds are horizontal inclined or horizontal we don't know if a surface is covered with soil and if i take and this may not be true thickness we don't know therefore whatever the thickness i get it may be or may not be therefore we call it apparent thickness now we will have this whether i take this here i take this here it is one and the same the same t here now you check if this is the theta is bedding plane and is bedding plane and this is the perpendicular correct therefore this angle is equal to 90 minus theta is this angle this angle is equal to this angle this angle is equal to this angle because bending planes are parallel and therefore if this is 90 minus theta this is also 90 minus theta now what happens in this t divided by 90 minus theta is sin theta t upon sin theta is equal to w or if i have to get a t is equal to bring it sin theta is cos theta sin by cos theta is tan theta therefore i get t is equal to w tan theta hope you got it should i repeat it not necessary so this is 90 minus theta in this force in this triangle i have considered 
capital T and this theta, this is theta, this relationship I have taken and obtained this is T is equal to T up to this relation I used and to get this T is equal to W tan theta I get this formula simple using this and 90 minus theta is a cos theta we know W sin theta divided by cos theta means that become W tan theta. So small t is a W tan theta. I substituted the value of the t here. This t I know, this t you know, t by t and this t value I substitute. That is t upon t is equal to uh, sin theta is that is cos theta. So now I want this t. Therefore, this t, uh, t upon cos theta, correct? No, you substitute the value of t, that is w sin theta divided by cos theta, that is equal to w, uh, w tan theta equal to small t. This is the relation we got, the same thing I have done here. Now, this is a simple trigonometric relationship when ground is horizontal. Now, taking this, let me try a simple problem. From a horizontal ground, a vertical borehole is taken. This is the horizontal ground. This is the horizontal ground. A vertical borehole is taken. It intersected a sheared sandstone at a depth of 25 meter and this is continued shear sandstone up to 40 meter. It means T is 40 minus 25, 40 minus 25, apparent T is 15 meter. This angle of bedding plane is, they have given, is 30 degree. Theta is 30 degree, apparent T is 15 and we have to find the other parameters. That is what if the dip of the sandstone bed is 30 degree, find out the width of the outcrop. Width is we have this W is equal to tan theta, correct? Now, simple. Hope everything is clear. Okay, now what we have here T 15 meter, theta is this much, 15 divided by tan theta is 15 divided by tan of 30 means 0.57 that gives W as 26 meter. So now in the second formula I substitute the value because I have the value of W and theta. W is a 26 meter, sine of 30 is 0.5, therefore true thickness I get 13 meter. Sorry, this is wrong. 13 meter, not sine. 13 meter. Sorry, this you remove. So, capital T is a 13 meter. That is the simple solution. Clear? No. But ground is not always horizontal. Ground do have undulation, but with the help of compass, if I measure, it is always with respect to horizontal. Horizontal I can assume and from that horizontal I measure the angle. Whenever I say the slope, it is with respect to horizontal only. So case 2 is if both the ground and bed so slope in the same direction possible. Now this is the assumed horizontal surface. This is the ground. This is the ground. From the ground a rock is a sloping. Correct? Now what are the things? If this is the theta 1 measure from the ground assumed horizontal surface. This is a theta 1, inclination of the bedding plane. And then this is a theta 0. 
that is measured from horizontal to the inclined ground horizontal surface or assumed horizontal to the ground that is theta 0. Now, the same formula slight modification what is that t is equal to w sin theta 1 minus theta 0 theta 1 minus theta 0 that become the modification. Similarly, small t is theta 1 minus theta 0. What is theta 1? Is inclination or dip of the bedding plane. Theta 0 is a slope of the ground. This is the modification from the horizontal. So, theta 0 slope of the ground. Theta 2 if I minus this one and this one that becomes theta 2. What is that? If the ground is sloping, sorry, if I make it to horizontal, this also rotate means theta 1 minus theta 0 should be equal to theta 2. Yes. Now, we take a simple example. It is proposed to construct a rainwater harvesting structure across a river which has a gradient of 1 is to 5, a river has a slope and this is the topography we express in terms of gradient. A sheared sandstone bed is exposed along the river bed for a certain length in the direction. Excellent. Sandstone itself is porous and permeable and it is sheared much more porous and permeable. Therefore, across that nala, if we construct a bond like, artificial recharge becomes simple. Yes. So, for a certain length in the direction of a flow, direction of flow means if a river is flowing, is the direction of flow. In the same direction, beds are also sloping like this. Correct. For certain length. Hi. Carefully see, this is the horizontal or assumed horizontal surface. This is a river flow. This is the river bed. Along a river bed, a sandstone is exposed for a certain length. Correct? For a certain length. We do not know. I have to construct a rainwater harvesting structure. Where do I construct? Ideally, I construct my rainwater harvesting structure like this and till the sandstone bed is completely covered, I better picture I draw. If this is the ground, this is the gradient of the road, sorry, nala, if this is the inclination of the rock, if I construct a rainwater harvesting structure, a bund like this, and spread the water like this, that is good enough, it can percolate here. If I construct here, uh, this is not a porous permeable fractured bed, water may not percolate even if I construct here, this much water, whatever present here is not going to percolate, may evaporate, that is a loss. Similarly, if I construct a structure somewhere here, then part of the effective chance for percolation also I lose. If even if I construct it like this, if I spread water here, they do not percolate. Sandstone is up to here. Beyond that, there is no sandstone and that water also get evaporated. Therefore, ideally for me is those effective is the sandstone bed exposure. This is the effective. If this much, if I submerge, effective percolation take place. That I have to find. What is the effective spread? This is the problem. For a certain length along in the direction of flow. In a vertical borehole, vertical borehole, the sandstone is intersected at a depth of 35 meter. At that 35 meter. This is 35 meter. But it did not continue up to here, but did not continue beyond 55 meter means at 55 meter the sheared sandstone ends. Beyond that there is no sandstone or sheared sandstone. There may be some other rock. Find out the effective width of the water spread required. This is the effective width of the water spread required for rainwater harvesting. How to go ahead about it? 
next is yes in the previous form if this is the horizontal this is the river bed this is the vertical bore hole and it has intersected here at 35 meter here at 55 meter therefore difference is this thickness is a 20 meter i got small t yes theta 1 is they have given 40 degree theta 1 they have given theta 1 somewhere here somewhere here here ha remote sasto shear bed river bed has certain length for for the bore 35 not extend 55 to find out the effect length so data sorry partial that uh, this degree he has not given in the solution we have the theta 1 is a 40 degree here we have to have a slight modification that is a the bed is dipping at a 40 degree we have to add okay the theta 1 is 40 degree theta 0 is so 1 is to 5 has given 1 is to 5 that is gradient of the ground 1 is to 5 means 1 upon 0 0.5, 0 0.2 of 0.2 we have to find tan theta that is tan of 0.2 is 3 degree 49 minutes therefore we have the formula t equal to double sin t equal to double tan theta 1 minus theta 2 we substitute this small t is 20 tan 36 minus so 40 minus 3.49 that is 36.51 so this is you get and you have the value of 20.20 20 divided by 0 0.74 you have the w is this much this is the w now in the second formula w into sin of 40 minus 3.49 this is u that value is 0 0.5949 sign of 36 degree something so you get ultimately capital t as 15.53 you got the w you got the capital t capital t is required if i know the true thickness how what is the volume of the rock in three dimension i can find and what is the porosity and how much water it can store that kind of information is possible yes we have case 3 another case now in this the ground is sloping this way and beds are sloping in this way both are in opposite direction if the beds have angle theta 1 and the ground has theta 2 our formula becomes lightly say theta 1 plus theta 2 in the sense this is a theta this is the ground if beds i have to ground is inclined generally ground should be horizontal if i wish to make the ground horizontal this one also move by that much angle it means theta 1 plus theta 2 become the formula similarly tan equal to double theta 1 plus theta 2 using this we shall try one simple problem so now a limestone bed is a dipping into a hill if this is a hill limestone bed is dipping into the hill into the hill by 30 degree where the ground is sloping 1 is to 5 it is proposed to excavate this limestone bed limestone bed and query what is the effective what is the where it is ha huh? proposed to quarry the limestone bed in a vertical borehole the limestone is intersected at 25 meter and continued up to 40 meter depth find out the effective working phase of the quarry how much is the working phase this is the working phase how do i find simple now yes now theta 1 plus theta 2 tan theta 1 plus theta 2 it become small t we know 45 minus 25 it is 15 meter theta 1 is 30 degree that of the limestone bed theta 2 is 
he has given 1 is to 4, 1 is to 4 means 1 upon 4, that is tan of 0.25, that gives you 4 degree 36, means so much, okay. Now substitute W is equal to tan of 30 plus 4.36, 34.36. So, small t is 15 meter we know here, 15 meter and tan of 34 point this much we know. Therefore, we get a W as 22.025. That is effective width of the working face. Also, we want to find a true thickness because tomorrow we require how much limestone bed I can excavate for which calculation I need perfect thickness true thickness. So, this is 22.025 the width sine of 34.36 on calculation we find capital thickness, true thickness, capital T or true thickness is 12.35 meter. Friends, with this we are able to understand the some simple problem we can estimate, but these simple problems are not adequate for many of the complicated projects. We have some complicated projects like a tunnel, how we go ahead about this, we will try to understand. Friends, so far what we have done, using a depend strike and some trigonometry functions, if one or two parameter is missing the other information we get. So as to get more and more information about the rocks below the ground. Often that is not sufficient, we have to go for drill or borehole data. How we will make use of the borehole data, we shall try to learn. 